Praise the Lord. Welcome to today's Dandy Way Bible Study. I am Dr. Tunji Akintilo, and I am excited to welcome everyone to today's Bible study. We are studying the book of Genesis, and we are on Genesis chapter 41. Today's study is so exciting. In fact, it's um, so important and so exciting that I want to implore everyone to pay a special attention, to be very attentive to what we are going to study today. And please share this message with all of your friends, in fact, all of your enemies. <laughs> Okay, praise God, because this is this is this is just so good. I just can't wait for as we go, go into the study of the word. Uh, the title of our study today is Read and Be Ready. Read and Be Ready. Really awesome. Praise God. Let's go straight to the word of God. We are on Genesis chapter uh, 41, and we will be reading verses 32 to 45 today. Verses 32 to 45. Please get your Bibles. I have the New King James Version, and I'm going to start reading. But before that, let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today's study. We praise you, Lord, that you have put uh, so much uh, good into your word. So much benefit uh, that, that, that is lying under the surface as we study your word. We pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to reveal this to us. And Father, you will help us as we put all of these principles into work in our lives. The Father will continue to get the benefit and you, Lord, get the glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, Genesis 41. Let's read from verse 32. We'll be going to uh, verse 45. And quickly, in part two of our study, we looked at the dream of Pharaoh. So this section is going to take it off from the point where Pharaoh told the dream to Joseph. Let's read. Genesis 41, 32. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land to collect one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven plentiful years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that are coming and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. Then that food shall be as a reserve for the land for the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land may not perish during the famine. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring of his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. And he clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. And he had him ride in the second chariot, which he had. And they cried out before him, Bow the knee. So he set him over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh 
also said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without your consent, no man may lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zavenat Pania, and he gave him as wife Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. So Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Praise God. We are continuing our study of the life history of Joseph so far in the book of Genesis. In fact, right from chapter 12, we have been looking at the biographies of the patriarchs. Okay, the patriarchs meaning Abraham, uh, his son Isaac, and then Isaac's son Joseph, uh, I mean Jacob, and now we're on the life history of Joseph. Joseph, as you found out, is probably the most popular among the patriarchs, okay? Because many people identified with him. You know, Abraham was a major, major saint, a man of faith. In fact, the level of faith that many people just aspire to. But Joseph, you know, people just identify with him because he started from nothing. He was a dreamer and he became promoted to being the second in command of the first world at the time, the land of Egypt. So uh, we are going to focus on this uh, aspect, this narrative or uh, section of chapter 41. And I want to implore us not to look at it as uh, it's not a magical story. I know there's a miracle in how Pharaoh promoted Joseph, but there's a reason why Pharaoh was so much committed. In fact, he gave so much to Joseph. There is a reason behind it. And that is what we're going to look at, even though the Bible doesn't say directly, but we're going to discover today. So I want to invite us to look at the preface, a preface for Today's study is found in the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verses 3 and 4. And I want to say right away that there is a code that is revealed in this section of Scripture and several others, okay? In the Bible, there is a code, and I want us to pay particular attention, okay? Okay? Because, you know, I heard a businessman told me before that behind every successful corporation, there is a code. And that code is a secret. And they will not reveal it to anybody. Okay? Because the code is the foundation of that corporation. And without it, that company does not exist. Apple Corporation has a code. They won't tell you. <laughs> okay? Microsoft Corporation has a code. Amazon has a code, which is a secret, and they will not tell anybody, okay? They call it uh, uh, proprietary information, and there's a law against it. You can't even disclose your proprietary information to anyone without the company's permission. Now, on the individual level, Anybody that you see that is so successful in their life, they have a personal code. And that code was, is, is being disclosed <laughs> in the Bible. You want to be successful? God is so good that he's the only one that puts his information right out there. He gives that code in these verses and in the section of Genesis 41 that we're looking at today. The code is right there. God said in his word, if you seek me, you will find me. If you look for the code, I'm going to give it to you. And for those who want to be successful, for those who want to be impactful, for those who want to make a difference, pay attention today, okay? Now, the preface, I'm so excited, okay? Proverbs 24, and I'm going to read these verses, it's verses 3 and 4, it's on the screen. True wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled 
with all precious and pleasant riches. Do you want to build your life? Okay? And let it be built. So that the rooms in your life will be filled with precious and pleasant riches. I don't think anybody has any problem with that, okay? Because for each person that builds this kind of a life, hundreds, maybe even thousands will benefit. If you want to build your life to be successful, to be impactful, here is the code. And I underline the words in these verses. True wisdom, a house is built. Wisdom. Understanding and knowledge. Now, what is the relationship of these three words? Wisdom, we are going to find out, is the principal thing. Okay? It is worth more than gold and silver. Wisdom is not magical. There's no miracle to wisdom. Wisdom is available to everybody. Okay? So, how do you get to the point of wisdom? Which Joseph applied in Genesis 41. That Pharaoh was so impressed. In fact, he almost, almost, almost wanted to give him the crown. Okay? Now, to get wisdom... You start with knowledge. When you acquire knowledge from the knowledge that you have acquired, through reading, okay, and I might be going ahead of myself here, but I want to be clear on that, you can get understanding of what you understood, what the things that you understand, you can apply in your life. And that is the definition of wisdom. I know there are some aspects of wisdom that, you know, it looks like God just puts somebody to sleep and gives them the wisdom, okay? Like Solomon, <laughs> all right? Even if God does that for several people listening to me now, it will be like telling you something in a language that you don't understand, okay? You have to have some knowledge first. You have to have understanding of the knowledge that even when God shows up to you in your dream and he tells you something, now you can get it. If you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the understanding, God himself showing up as a miracle to give you the wisdom, it will be a waste. So, wisdom is attainable, achievable by all people. And I'm sure several of us are getting it, okay? This is the code. Any individual, if you listen to them, who has made it in this life, who are successful in their calling, they use this code. And with due respect, I'm going to mention some names, okay? The late Pastor Frederick Casey Price referenced this code. The late Dr. Miles Monroe consistently mentioned this code. Pastor Yedepo in Nigeria, <laughs> who is exceedingly successful in his ministry, mentions this code. Let's go beyond the ecclesiastical realm. Mr. Warren Buffett said he is successful because he uses this code. And I want to believe, in fact, several other people, Bill Gates, if, if you really sit down to ask them, they will tell you, this is it. And how do you now get this to apply in your life? And mine too, okay? How do we get this to apply in our life? If only one person gets it, <laughs> as I mentioned before, 
hundreds, thousands benefit. So I'm, I'm okay with just one person getting it. Now, as I mentioned, wisdom starts with knowledge. There is no miracle to wisdom. It starts with knowledge. It's achievable. It's attainable. It's available to everyone to the same extent. In fact, with technology, with the influence of technology, wisdom is more available now, more achievable now than before. Knowledge is the beginning. Wisdom starts with knowledge. You know, the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 5 and 7. Let me read that real quick. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 5 and 7. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget. Not turn away from the words of my mouth. That's verse 5, not verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. And I want to say it loud enough so that even I myself hears this. Wisdom is the principal thing. Verse 7. Not the flashy car. Not the big house. Not the fanciful clothing. Okay, to build a house, to have precious stones and gems and rubies in it, to have an impactful life, get wisdom, and you know you're getting, get understanding. Because I want to believe, you know, that that is what Joseph's life was about. We are told wisdom is worth more than gold. Let's read that one too. Proverbs 3, verses 13 and 14. Proverbs chapter 3, verses, 14 and verses 13 and 14, and 14. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver. And her gain than fine gold. Now, let's go back to Genesis 41 that we just read. And discover why, you know, I am personally so excited. Because ordinarily we read these passages with some uh, background of this is a miracle that happened to Joseph. You know, he... It is just miraculous because he was in the prison and from prison to go to being prime minister. Of course, it's a miracle. But there's something behind the miracle. There's a code behind the miracle. We read this passage already. Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream. And he didn't stop there. Immediately he interpreted the dream, Joseph saw an opportunity right here. <laughs> and he was telling Pharaoh, let's read this. Let's look over some of this again. Uh, verse 33, now therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. You saw the wise man, wisdom there. Okay. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land to collect one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven plentiful years. The Bible didn't say this expressly. Joseph must have been reading. He must have been interested in economic principles because in essence what he was telling Pharaoh here that Pharaoh fell for it, you know, as we say in Nigeria, he fell yakata. He fell a hundred percent. He was telling Joseph, Pharaoh, Joseph was telling Pharaoh, I'm going to save you money. And not only that, I'm going to institute a system of taxation, which apparently Egypt did not have yet at that time. I'm going to build a foundation, have a reserve, 
And based on that reserve, I will institute a system of taxation. Number one, I'm going to make you rich by those one-fifth that we're going to put aside. And then I'm going to ensure that you continue to be rich through this system of taxation. Who wouldn't fall for that? <laughs> Maybe the, the nation was already broke and Pharaoh was already, you know, looking for economic advisors and people must probably telling him all different kind of stuff. And this guy just came from out of out of prison. Let's let's take that he came from prison. He's saying, I'm gonna build you a financial reserve. And I'm gonna institute a system of taxation that will ensure that you continue to stay wealthy in your position as the king. <laughs> Pharaoh probably almost jumped, even all these officers. Let's see, let's see even all the officers that were, that were listening. Yeah, verse 37. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh. And in the house of all the servants, I'm going to build you a financial reserve. I'm going to ensure that you continue to be wealthy in this line. I'm going to institute a system of taxation. That was good in the eyes of his servant. What did Pharaoh say? Can we find anybody else like this? I've never heard anything of this nature. You're going to make me rich, and you're going to ensure that I stay wealthy? If I tell anybody that, I, 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 you probably, you know, Take off your signet ring, give the shirt, you take the slippers, just, just do it. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, verse 39, In as much as God has shown you this, there is no one as discerning and as wise as you. Me never hear nothing like this. Okay? You shall be over my house. Go ahead and do it. Okay? Make me rich, <laughs> Joseph, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne, because I'm the king, will I be greater than you? And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. You have all the tools to work with. You want to build a financial reserve? Look, the whole land of Egypt is before you. Okay? Then Pharaoh took off his sickness. Look, I even give you authority to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, put it in Joseph's hand, clothe him in garments of fine linen, and put a gold chain around his neck. You go ahead, do what you want to do. And he made him ride in the second chariot which he had, and the crowd before him bowed the knee. He said, You should open all the doors for this guy to do what he has in plan. It could fail, but at least we give him all the chance and every opportunity. Now we can back off a little and say, oh, this is not just a miracle, you know, getting out of prison to become second in command of the, of the nation. It's not just a miracle that you're going to sit back on your fat behind and, you know, just waiting for that time when the miracle will come. You know, you don't know nothing. You don't read. You don't. There is no substance to what you're saying. You are not telling anybody, I'm going to make you money. <laughs> I'm going to save you money. And I'm going to make sure you stay rich. That is the real breakdown of what Joseph told Pharaoh. Uh, we can say there's an element of miracle, but there's no miracle to that. It just tells us Joseph knew something. He must have been reading. He must have been interested in economics. There is that dream interpretation, which, you know, there even there's an art of dream interpretation. There are books on dream interpretation. Some of them you have to be careful because it's tending into cultism and all that. He knew about dream interpretation and he knew about economics. When you go to your employer <laughs> tomorrow, you give them a formula that I'm going to make you rich and let's see what happens. They promote you to vice president of the corporation. If I, the guy will give you his car. You just drive around and make me rich. You know, go ahead, do it. Praise God. So now to get serious, 
Uh, Genesis 41, uh, verses 31, uh, 32 to 45. As we normally do, now let's get back to business. We look at the major themes. When we read a section of the scripture, just as we read in this chapter, we look at the major themes and pull those out. There are more. There is always more in the word of God. The word of God is like peeling an onion. There are always layers of layers of applications and revelation, okay? So these are the four that we're going to look at today. There are several more in here. Praise God. So number one is to get wisdom, which we already discussed. Wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom. For you to get wisdom, number two, read. All right? Number three, be ready. And number four, problems have solutions. So let's look at the wisdom again, okay? We found out in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, that wisdom is the principal thing. That is the thing we're supposed to make priority in our lives because wisdom is worth more than gold and silver. We read these passages already, okay? Wisdom promotes boldness and confidence. You look differently. You talk differently. You dress differently. You walk differently when you have wisdom. When you are not just blind. You are just doing everything waiting for miracles to happen. Okay? You, 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 you know some stuff. <laughs> and, and you walk confidently. Get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. And we looked at the code. How do we get this wisdom? It's not all miracle. It's not all you're going to sleep and God is going to show you this fanciful formula that you don't even understand. Okay? The code is here. It starts with knowledge. I know knowledge <laughs> is spelled as W-O-R-K. <laughs> all right? And that is where the, the challenge starts. You spell knowledge as a four-letter word, <laughs> not the dirty one. Four-letter word, knowledge. That is work. As my Ghanaian <laughs> brothers and sisters would say, work. <laughs> knowledge is work, okay? You have to read, okay? You have to keep reading. <laughs> Let me put it this way because I'm number one on the list. We have to read, and we have to keep reading. And then you are not just reading just to get your eyes across the page. No, you want to pray for understanding. As you read, you pray for understanding. How do you really get understanding? Whatever you have read, you meditate on it. You turn it over in your mind. You mutter, you know, to saying it to yourself. You thinking of it. You turn it around. You know, instead of spending hours and hours on social media and arguing with people and wasting your time, read and go and think about what you read. We find this instruction in Joshua chapter one verse eight, which you know we are all familiar with. Joshua one eight. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night. Meditate in it day and night. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. We find the same thing in Ephesians 1, 7. So this is not just Old Testament stuff. Okay. It's in the New Testament as well. Ephesians 1, 7. Paul is, Apostle Paul is praying here that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Actually, we are going to get to this. That same formula, it actually is here. That same formula, knowledge, understanding, wisdom is in this verse, in the New Testament. Okay? There is the wisdom <laughs> on top, which is the final result. There is the revelation, which is understanding, and then the knowledge. Through Apostle Paul, the Holy Spirit is revealing this code to us again, okay? You get knowledge by work, reading, 
You get understanding by meditation and prayer. The Lord helped me to understand this. And you meditate on it. And then you'll be able to apply what you've understood in your, in your life. As Joseph applied what he knew about economics, building financial base, instituting taxation system in Egypt, by proposing that to Pharaoh, Pharaoh just, he just, he just, you know, give him, give him a blank check that, you know, <laughs> and I won't blame the poor guy or the rich guy. Just give him a blank check to do what he wants. The wisdom is when he apply what he have understood as wisdom. He who have ears, let him hear, as the Bible says. Let's go ahead. So we already discussed how do you get wisdom? You read. You have to read. And make reading a priority in your life. We ought, we, we, including myself, whenever I say you, I'm talking me number one on the list, okay? We ought to make reading number one on the list. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. The Apostle Paul is instructing his protege, Timothy, here, that be diligent. In fact, let's read that in the original King James. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Just get told him, study. I mean, that's like a command. You have to study. You want to make it in this life? You have to read. Okay? We know reading or acquiring knowledge. That knowledge is a four-letter word. <laughs> it's not a dirty word. It is hard work. You have to work. It is an investment. These days, knowledge is, is, is practically free. You can Google anything. All right? But there are still some things you may have to pay for. It is an investment. And according to Mr. Warren Buffett, you know in the finance industry, they said money compounds. Mr. Warren Buffett is saying knowledge that you acquire also compounds, which means if you start with, they say if you start one cent today and it's doubling every day, that in 30 days you have like a hundred million Dollar. You started with one cent, in 30 days it becomes like 100 million. Because that doubling compounds. The knowledge that you're getting compounds the same way as you go. Now we ought to make that study, acquiring knowledge, a priority. 1 Timothy 4 6. 1 Timothy 4 6. Uh, let me. Uh, 4.16, rather. 1 Timothy 4.16. Take heed unto thyself. Let's read that in the New King James. Okay? Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Doctrine is, you know, spiritual principle. The same, number one to four that we're looking at, this reading is a doctrine. Okay? Continue in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Doctrine is not just an ecclesiastical religious word. Doctrine means principle. And principles do not change. Facts change. Okay? Even facts change. The weather change. The time change. Everything around you changes. Principle does not change. In whatever language <laughs> you say, it, principle does not change. Make it a priority to read, to acquire these principles, and we find how much that style is paying Joseph here. That he could promote him from prison to prime minister. And as I mentioned before, reading promotes confidence. So the obvious question would be, what should I be reading, Dr. Akintilo? You keep talking about reading, reading, reading. What should I read? Primarily the Bible. All right? And there's enough in the Bible for any individual to read for a hundred lifetimes. Because, did I say a hundred lifetimes? Let's do the math. From the 
beginning of the Bible to the end, it took 1,600 years to write. For you to really squeeze out all the Jews in the Bible, you need 1,600 years. And an average person lives, what? Let's say 100 years. So, if you, from the time you're born, <laughs> you come out of your mother's womb, you grab a Bible, you start reading, till 100 years when you die, 16 of that, you will still have something left <laughs> because you can start again. So, there's enough to study. People will say, oh, I know what the Bible says. They don't know what they're talking about, okay? There's enough in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation to last several lifetimes for each individual. In fact, the, the content of what is in the Bible is infinite. All right? So primarily, read the Bible. You need to read for your career. If you are a physician like I am, okay, I need to take good care of my patients. I have to know what is current in the healthcare industry, in uh, healthcare management in whatever field that you may be in. You may be an engineer or an architect or a nurse or a teacher. You have to be, you know, top notch in your career to read for your career, okay? And then general knowledge. Maybe it's cooking, maybe it's traveling, maybe it's, you know, uh, uh, gardening, whatever catches your interest. Primarily to read the Bible. In fact, there is a popular American president, I believe in the 1800s, that, you know, his definition of education is ability to read and comprehend the Bible. As long as you can read and understand the Bible, according to that American president, you, you, you've made it. You are educated. Okay? Nowadays, you need more than that. All right? But that is just so foundational. Read the Bible. Read for your career. Most importantly, read. And now the third part is to be ready. If you are reading, you're praying for understanding, and you want to be ready, looking for opportunities. First Peter 3.15. Let's read that. First Peter 3.15. We're running out of time, so let's be uh, a little... Uh, quick here. So First Peter 3.15, and I read. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So always be ready. Um, the way my pastor trained me, for example, and I'm just sharing this, is to always be ready to give a sermon. <laughs> okay? If somebody calls you, I'm supposed to give a sermon at a church in an hour, and I'm, for some reason something happened, I can't go. Can you go for me, Dr. Akintilo? The answer should be yes. And you should have something ready. I believe I made the point. Now, you don't just be ready. You look out for those opportunities. Always looking around you for the opportunity to apply the knowledge which you have learned. Okay? And let's read Lamentation. And I pray the Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts. Okay? Lamentations chapter 3 verses 22 and 23. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. This is an application. Here. God's mercies, opportunities are new every morning that you wake up. Forget about yesterday. There are new opportunities for that day. And the third part of this is to be watchful. We all know this uh, parable Jesus gave of the ten virgins. You know, five of them were ready. Five, because of the delay... They didn't have the extra stuff. So always be prepared. Even, you know, have backup plan. Backup to the backup plan. <laughs> okay. Always be ready. Always look out. And always be watchful. And finally, to realize that problems have solutions. In fact, you want to identify problems. 
And you can go ahead and pray and seek for solutions. All of these corporations that we mentioned before, all of the people that we said are wealthy, they identified the problem and they found the solution and that made them wealthy. It's not as we commonly have in Africa that it's only people that steal. It's the, it's the politician that steal that makes money and nobody is challenging their money. Okay? The normal way is to identify a problem solve that problem, and money follows, okay? Not to be looking for opportunity to steal, opportunity to be, you know, clever and, 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 and commit, you know, be corrupt and all of those things. That is why we have societies that are so ragged and disorganized in, in, in Africa as a whole, but, you know, some particular nations, Nigeria is one of them, Okay. The Caribbean countries, I think they're, they're a lot cleaner, okay? But we should be looking for problems. Pray to solve that problem, not for China to solve your local problem, <laughs> bring you the solution, and you're paying them for it. You know, one of the main staple foods in Nigeria is Gary. I was so ashamed of myself. That where are all the engineers? When the Chinese engineers built a machine to process cassava and make a re imagine. I, I doubt if the Chinese eat a bar unless we've taught them to eat it because it's good. <laughs> okay. The Chinese have designed a machine to make gari from cassava to sell to the African nations who consumes the gari, who produces tens and hundreds of engineers from their colleges and universities every year. I, 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 uh, uh, let's leave it at that. Identify <laughs> problems, pray and seek for solutions. As Pharaoh must have been speaking to Joseph and he was interpreting the dream, he must have been simultaneously praying. Maybe he was praying in tongues. Maybe he was praying in tongues. I will make you money. <laughs> I will bid you a financial reserve. And I will make sure we institute a system of taxation that will establish your legacy and dynasty. Pharaoh said, you got me. <laughs> you got me. You want to make me a million, please write me an email. <laughs> Send me a note. You want to make me a million, do it. <laughs> That's all I'm going to tell you. Praise God. You can pray in tongue, silently, while opportunities are before you, that God shows you. And even Jesus Christ promised that the Holy Spirit will bring to your mind what you already know. Maybe what you read in a book 15 years ago. The Holy Spirit brings it to your mind and you can apply it in that situation and you be, your life becomes transformed. Praise the Lord. And this message is not just for Christians, okay? Everybody, because God is good. God is good to all. Praise the Lord. Now, let's, uh, uh, that's the end of our message today. Uh, we need your help to continue to, uh, you know, provide these awesome, life-changing messages in this ministry. Please visit our website, thedendyway.org, and click donate so you can help as we continue to, you know, be faithful to the Lord's calling of sharing the word with you and with everybody. Praise the Lord. I look forward to seeing you next time as we continue to the next part of our study of Genesis chapter 41. God bless you. <music>